Hey everybody, so I wanted to quick give a quick introduction to this video. This is once again Union Canal Days. Um, we had, you know, most of it, you had the Civil War tents, you had a bunch of different uh, places where they had the pot belly pigs and the uh, the cows, the chocolate cows, by the way. Um, you also had then, you had the fair that Jonestown Bank and Trust, because this was what they were celebrating, it was their 150th anniversary, Jonestown Bank and Trust, started out in Jonestown, Pennsylvania, actually where the bank is currently there in Jonestown, right across the street, uh, it's, I think it's a laundromat now, and then a whole bunch of apartments, because I had had a friend that had lived in there, but down there in the first floor is where the bank originally started 150 years ago, so they were sponsoring everything, everything was free, very, very cool, Cliff and I went on Saturday, uh, they had one other booth that I really wish we had stopped at and seen his performance, but it was about the music of the Union Canal, because that was, you know, it was one way, it was a very slow transit, uh, so a way to entertain themselves was music, so he had a couple of different instruments that would have been there and that type of stuff, so I would have liked to delve a little further into that, um, but this video concentrates, oh, there was a group of four tents, uh, where they dealt in different aspects of medieval history. The group is called the Society for Creative Anachronism. And this is the one card uh, for the one group. But I do have in the first part of the video, there are, I don't know if you'll be able to read the QR codes off of that or not, but I will post in the comments and in the descriptions the links to not only Shire the Black Rose, which is a more local group, that concentrates on uh, medieval bow shooting, sharpen like the axes throwing and that type of thing, which I'll talk to you guys a little later in the video about some of the plans and getting together with these people. So it'll be another really cool video. And probably hopefully together with Cliff and Lewis. Uh, it's right down in E-Town. But anyways, so they had four different tents. First one was sort of the generalized tent is, is the parent group that sort of dealt with all of medieval history, and he gives the dates, I think he said 600 to 1600 uh, uh, AD, I guess it would be, yeah, it'd be AD, yeah, I don't know why I'd think there's something else, but slow right now, it's not before Christ, but, or, yeah, but anyway, it was after Roman times, it's like that, that they had the medieval ages in Europe, uh, but also the second tent, he dealt a lot with like Asian uh, medieval culture, uh, he dealt specifically with a lot of the games that he had in his tent were Chinese, uh, some influence, but it was chess mainly, dominoes, and different variances, and variances I've never seen, which was quite cool, and then he also dealt with some medieval weaponry in the third part of his video, because I'd sort of, I went in there after I talked to the first group, and Cliff was talking to the guy in his tent, about the different things. So we sort of go in midway. So one of the things, I'll talk about a couple of those different games, some of the unique features, some I never heard of before. And it's just really, really cool. But uh, Cliff sort of got out of there. And then, like, I'll have this issue with the left side of my back. It starts to go out. And it started to hit around, like, 15, 16 minutes. And I was, like, trying to get out of there without being rude, which is really hard to do that. And I could see the other people looking at me like, uh, thankfully his dog started to lick somebody's face. And he's like, no licky, no licky. And I took that opportunity and left. I really enjoyed this guy's conversation because he really was very, very knowledgeable. And like he says at the, towards, I think the beginning of the second part of the video and with him, he'd been doing this for 50 years. So he really, really knew his stuff. So there's a lot of knowledge there that you guys should find pretty interesting. Uh, third group could tell I was in a lot of pain because I was getting tired and they sort of alluded to the fourth tent. He dealt with more of the medieval side of games and stuff like that. <coughs> <coughs> Apparently he was quite a talker as well. So I would have loved to have gone back and talked to him, but you start getting into the lengths of videos getting too long and that type of stuff. And, and, my back was done by that point. We had walked around up the food food area and then up to where they have the actual uh, canal boat rides. And at that point, we were like, let's go to Buddy's. 
I'm tired. My back's giving out. My my legs are just beat and tired. And it's just antibiotic was sort of. I just finished with that and it's sort of affecting me. But anyways, so this this video concentrates primarily on them. Like I said, I will have the web pages. I'm not going to go a ton into that, but I'll, I'll sort of have a segue in between the different parts of the videos. And then at the end, I'll talk about the plans to meet with this Shire of Black Rose. So I hope you guys enjoy this. It really was an interesting conversation with these folks and what they do in preserving European and Asian heritage of the medieval age. Enjoy, folks. So here's some more that, like the Boy Scouts were, were over there. But this looks like it's more like French and Indian War, perhaps, maybe. But... You know, some bows and things like that. Almost took a stick to the eye there. No, I'm not sure what. He looks, he looks like a wizard. Okay. Yeah, no, that's that's different. I'm not sure. That, oh, this might be the, like the medieval stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because it looks like there's a shield over there behind the medieval puppy. <laughs> Very neat. Hey, how are you doing? Good morning. So what do you guys do? This is medieval? Yeah, medieval and renaissance. Uh, it's the Society for Creative Anachronism. Okay. Uh, the focus is on, these days, anywhere in the world between 600 and 1600 AD. Oh, nice. Basically from the fall, from, from the Roman Empire pull, the Ro pulling out of Britain to roughly the, the early days of gunpowder weaponry. Okay, really neat. So do you guys have like a website or anything like this? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, there's, well, there's uh, the, co the, the codes there. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because we do, we have YouTube channels, so yes. we'd love well, to bring focus to you guys and what you do. If you do a search on YouTube, there are all kinds of performances and demonstrations. People videotape the battles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. SCA.org is okay. the, the, the international kind of umbrella organization. Okay. But as I say, the, the links are you can get from the, the codes over here. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Okay. Because. So there are the QR code codes for the different information. You guys can get that off of there. But yeah, this is really cool what they do here because this is this is how history is preserved. And if you don't have things like this done, you know, we forget so often. We forget recent history, but this is this is our immigrant history, really, because a lot of us came from England, a lot from Germany. And this type of history, European history, was very much what we uh, what we did. So we sort of walk into the middle of a conversation here uh, where Cliff Wandering Woodsman is talking to him about the different chess games. So we sort of miss the first group of chess games there. I don't think there's anything terribly, terribly unique about those. Those are just different variances over the age, and I sort of film over them. Uh but this, this gentleman really, really knew his stuff. He's also quite the talker. So uh, do enjoy. I had it semi-focused off of him because I'm not sure how comfortable he was with having the camera. At that stage, I could tell he got a little more comfortable as we went along because you're there filming somebody and you don't always know how people feel about that. So uh, enjoy this first part. He talks about all these different variances of chess and I think there's a really cool variants of dominoes as well um oh. that is the only acceptable game in the in the holy room uh, during the, the middle ages that was the in spain that was the only allowed game that you would not get punished for gambling <laughs> because a series of squadrons temples because of the four seasons spring summer fall winter matthew mark luke john the two the the, the the, the, the the humor version of, of the medieval sickness was there were wet humors, there were dry humors, there were cold humors, there were wet humors. Blood was a, was a, uh, was a hot, wet humor. Okay. Uh, phlegm, mucus, was a cold, wet humor. 
I have a, my, one of my other Dells hanging up, just so I'm hiding that. Um, this is an actual reproduction set of Dutch Renaissance Dominus. The neat thing about it is, it's a double six, you read the numbers on the top, is that it was, it was a political statement because this is a caricature of every occupation and all of them were nasty aspect of it. Well, hmm. uh, Mancala, African, the, uh, the only, okay, there are, there are race games, games of configuration, uh, war games like chess. Uh, there's about, there's about six different categories of games that any game can be played under, can be listed under. And her name is Cece. And uh, what happens is the only continent that had all six was Africa, because Africa had not gone. But, uh, yeah. But um, uh, if you've ever seen the Van Lindwick famous painting called The Chess Players, that's it. Oh, wow. And there is a guy that was doing, uh, and now they're very weird modern pieces. But he did a uh, courier set, 3D printed. Uh, Chinese, Chinese and Korean are pretty much the same, except that there's no river in Korean. So any, so any of the pieces on this side that normally could not cross, because like um, this could not cross, and these these stay inside the citadel as it does in Korean. But like the the elephants, the bishops, what you would think of as a bishop, they could only stay on this side of the river. And uh, basically, it's pretty much cannons are a neat piece because right now, okay, right now, the way these cannons are set up, white can immediately go and do that. And you say, wait a minute, huh? Okay, how does the cannon shoot? Now it can't. It doesn't have something to shoot over. And this is a, a Staunton reproduction. I, I actually have a Chinese set. There is also one that was played on a hex board where they added a new piece called a flag. And it was red, blue, and green. Oh, the first emperor who built the Great Wall, he caught people playing chess. Um, you know, after Chatrange, they, it, it just started exploding. And they said, what are you doing? And we're playing. Well, what, what's the big piece? Well, that's his king, and I've got the emperor. And the guy, the first emperor went, what? You're attacking the emperor. Treason! And <laughs> held them and kept them while they were alive, buried in the Great Wall. Oh. Oh, yeah. This is the guy who's got the tomb with the, the, the soldiers. The soldiers, the uh, terracotta. The terracotta army. Yeah. Did you see the National Geographic article on it? No. They computer scanned it and used color, techno color matching technology. It, they were painted. Oh wow! They're fabulous. Yeah. Oh my God! I've actually, uh, I've actually been this close to one of the chariots. I was actually under the bar looking. I said, "You can't go." I went, "I'm not looking. I want to look at the bottom of the damn thing." But uh, <laughs> no, there was a thing in '94 uh, called uh, "Last Son of Heaven," which had things in. Uh, I was, you know, and I said, "Can you open the case and take a stick and give me a mask and, so we can pick the tab the the summer armor?" Can I pick the tasks up so I can see how they're attached? No. <laughs> well, that was a neat thing with um, uh, the uh, Harding Museum. Uh, I went up and I'm getting close and I'm looking and they said, USCA? I said, yeah. They said, okay, hang on. I go downstairs, they come back. Here, gave me a pair of gloves, gave me a mask. I said, what do you want to handle? Wow. So, yeah. Uh, all the stuff sitting out on the front uh, is my personal stuff. It's uh, all, uh, it all is usable. I almost got ears the Society for Creative. creative uh, yeah, they, you, you, they had them up. They had the same one there? Okay, yeah. cool. All right, so several of the games that sort of stood out to me that I thought were pretty cool in this uh, was one, I like the one, the four seasons, where they started on all four corners of the board, and you had each of the seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. I'm not quite sure what the differences are there, but it was just it was, it was a cool, unique version of tress, chess, and I believe that was European in nature. There was also, if you notice, the the one board, it would have been on the left when he was talking, and it sort of had that weird, lighter color area that the king and the queen were in. 
that's called the Citadel. And the king and the queen in that variant are not allowed to leave that little area. And then they had that other thing. There's a new piece called the cannon where you're allowed to shoot over one of your characters, but you can if the character isn't in front of you. And then it'll literally go and hop over. And then there's also, I think, the, the bishop character, which I think in that one he said there was actually an elephant. So I sort of wonder if that might have been an Indian version of, of that and of chess and the bishop character was not allowed to cross in that variant there was like a river across the middle and the bishop could not cross that river on either side uh so i thought that was sort of cool and then it was also the story about how the emperor saw like you know i have the emperor and he has the king he's like you're attacking the emperor treason and sort of those guys did not have a good end. And then after that, during that guy's reign, you were not allowed to attack the king or the emperor. So that had to make it interesting. The last one that I've also thought was quite a cool, uh, the dominoes, which was a Roman era recreation of dominoes. I thought that was unique because they had the different professions were shown like it as the pieces and they were, none of them were good professions. So one can only guess what those professions were that were in that. So why that exactly is, I'm not sure, but it was just, he might even explain in the video and I just have forgotten, but uh, I thought that was sort of cool. And then that game with the, the stones at the end, that was, that was an Asian Chinese game there. That was, I'm sure very unique and a lot of fun, but it was cool seeing games from that period of time and, and also getting to see, how games over time evolve and, and the variants of those games. So he was very knowledgeable in the way he explained them. It's a shame we missed that first part because I'm sure there's something cool with those ones as well. But uh, he probably has something on one of those web pages that maybe has something on that. We can look that up further and maybe we go into a, a, a video of that and talk about that a little further and so like that. But uh, the next part, he goes into mainly, I believe it's more like weaponry and a lot into the archery. So he talks about the bow in particular quite a bit, and uh, it's a very, very cool conversation. Yeah, cool. Thank you for what you do, man. Oh, yeah. It's like you're well, preserving... I've been, I've been doing this for over 50 years. Now, can you imagine... Hang on a second. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, swords in the bow. Oh, on the back of the chair. Okay. Okay. This is okay. The parking lot starts up here. It goes on. This is the now. What you're seeing there? That line is on is on this here, and that's a third of the guys gals oh, wow. out there, and they're going full speed, full combat. It's about the mass of a baseball bat. Uh -huh. Um. Okay. This is an actual antique. When we're talking the thorough and that. Um, it's a Japanese yari, which is the straight spear. So the thing is, um, the martial art is sojutsu, mm -hmm. as opposed to naginata jutsu, which is a slashing spear, which was the traditional woman's weapon. Uh, if you ever watch the baby cart films with um, Ogami Ino, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, um, Wakayama Sabero, he was the top rated man in that style. Oh, wow. Um, but um, the thing is, there is an, there's an old rust, but it's very, very faint. I got when I got it for Hank Reinhardt's collection. I was cleaning it up because you know I don't want it to rust. It's, you know it's, it's fairly old, and uh, it came out of Kumamoto Castle. Okay, the southernmost island of uh, uh, Satsuma. By the way, do you like Satsumas? I, I'm not familiar with like Japanese. Mandarin oranges. Oh yeah. That's yeah. a satsuma. Oh okay, cool. That's what that's what the, their actual name is. Okay. Uh, but uh, basically, right at the top, there is Kumamoto Castle in Kumamoto City, and during the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-1905, the Russians came over the wall. Well, I'm taking the rust off. Something about this just doesn't look right. Let's take. I'm using rubber eraser to get it. Uh, it's called a. Uh, uh, um, um, a steel rubber eraser. Basically, it's hard rubber with abrasive. It, it, it takes the rust off like nobody's business. Yeah. Uh, real, and it doesn't harm the blades that much. So uh, what happens is, um, so I, I'm very carefully getting the, the remains to go into the 
I'm uh, scraping it with a knife. I take it over to a friend of mine who's also an NCIS junkie like I am. I go, put it on Major Mass Spec. He calls me, he goes, he sends me the report. He says, well, the, um, the metal, there's metal, it was metal, it was metal rust. But it was a little weird because it had vanadium, it had chrome, it had tungsten, you know, it had carbon, which I expected, and iron, and it also had hemoglobin. Oh, wow. Now, I'm not saying that it actually was you, but yeah. what's the most logical? It's a good thing? chance. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> That. Uh, it's a milled blade, so uh, so basically it's not anything fancy, but it is a totally usable Japanese great sword. Nice. And uh, the bow is a 34 pound um, draw, basically in shooting thumb ring. I've got a European glove that I wear. And I will do a demonstration <laughs> by pointing to the ground. <laughs> okay. You notice, there's no place for the arrow to rest, is there? No. Same thing with the longbow. It's shelfless. So the thing is, it would go... Like that. Over the map point? I'm, um, I believe it is. It, it could be under. It looks the right. like under from, what, from, okay. your, from where you were sitting. Yeah, from okay. Here. So it would be there. The thing is, it would be on here. I'm going to do a draw here so it, it goes. Basically, you would have a ring with a slot in it. It would hook under here, and that would, that would be the only thing that's keeping that on the string is your hand here. And when you're ready to fire, and I'm not going to do it. You would open. Shoot compound bow, pulley bow. Yeah. Use mechanical release, flicker release. Actually, Ragnar's got a thumb ring over there. Okay. Oh, really? He could show you. But uh, the gentleman that made this, uh, Janusz Kasar. Uh, he sees a ring. He's a man that, so, he thumb rings, is the man that re they sit here, invented and they allow you to, archery. No, nope, that's the right way. Allow you to pull against the string without injuring your thumb. Yeah. yeah. Well, I do it beyond. I'm, I'm just a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> He's got and way my, stronger fingers than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put it this way. Where that's at, that knock point, if, okay, if you put the T-square on the, the bow, you're going to see that the knock point's above. Well, if it was dead even and I draw, you want to get 35 stitches right there? Oh, yeah. It'll open your hand up. That, that quick. So yeah. it, by the time it drops down, it's out. But Janusz, um, he used to have a video on YouTube, and it's at the uh, Fort Dodge uh, Primitive um, um, Archery and Thrown Weapon Exhibition. Okay. So you're talking um, bows, crossbows, uh, uh, javelins, atlatls, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, no throwing knives or anything like that. What happens is, he's got a 75 pound draw bow. Okay, and the thing is, um, with this. You notice I started here and I went out. Yeah. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you get out, now I'm holding my finger over here much more. If it was a thumb ring, I could do it. I could literally do it like that. Yeah. Okay. But um, anyway, so he's got his bow, which he's been shooting for years on. Mm -hmm. He's got his horse, which he's had about 15 years. And he's got an arrow on a string. And you would carry your hand, your, them here. Yeah. Or you would have you, like you that have little ring mm -hmm. for the European archers, but the arrows would be put in. Yeah. Because it's much easier to grab, boom, grab, boom, grab, boom, grab, yeah. boom, as opposed to go here, arm, you know, hold on. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's the efficient, basically. Yep. So, um, anyway, uh, they say go. He kicks the horse up to about half, half trot speed. Oh, wow. And he has it on, so he starts on fire. The, Europe, the Olympic target, the gold, blue, red, black, white ones, are sitting out at 50 feet. Fire, 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 fire. Nine targets, dead center shots, 
22nd course. Wow. That's who built my boat. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the thing is, um, when Wilma Mantiller was the chief of the Cherokee, yeah. and the first woman chief, there were two young women. They were just out of their teens. That were Chevrolet Cherokee young ladies, and they were very interested in the history of the Cherokee. And the one thing is, the Cherokee lost their horse archery. Yeah, it was it was wiped out because they did when they got when they went on trail. You know, they were not allowed. They, that's the one thing. Um, if you ever go to a Cherokee um, casino, mm -hmm. don't ever try to pay with a twenty dollar bill. Yeah, you know yeah, why? Andrew Jackson. We don't take blood money. Yeah. Andrew Jackson in 1814 said to the Cherokee, come help me get rid of the Seminoles. Yeah. And then he turned around and betrayed them with the Trail of Tears. Yeah. In the summer, But uh, what happens is, uh, uh, the two young ladies were out at Fort Knox. They saw it and they talked to the and They said, you know, you, do you know anything about the Cherokee? He said, well, the Mogadar style of horse archery and the Cherokee were very, very similar. So, you know, I could probably show, show you how to do it. And they, he said, well, how long would it take? And he said, well, if you want to get good, uh, probably about six months. Yeah. Well, he's in Hungary. <laughs> so they went back and talked to the tribe. The little man killer got the council. Pay them to go there for three years, mm -hmm. come back. When they came back <laughs> in their mid-twenties, they were elders. You normally don't get to be an elder in the Cherokee Nation at 240. Yeah. They are the two youngest elders in the tribe. They're in their 60s now, I think. Yeah. But, yeah. You look at the family pictures small but no, yeah. Penzik, um, with, like with this, this is what I, you know, the bed in there, I live on that, I sleep on that at Penzik, this is what I live on. Um, I've got a buddy who um, camps next to me, he sets up two 16-foot girders. Mm -hmm. Now his girder is a little unusual, instead of using um, flexible saplings, he said, okay, uh, the HANA, looks like baby gate. Yeah. What happens is, um, it, um, um, What's it have to do? Flex. Yeah. What's made the what kind of wood is made to flex? Plywood. Yeah. He got plywood sheets, cut it in the in the two inch wide strips, and put it together. So instead of having just a front door, he put a front and a back door on. He mm -hmm. made two of them. The front back. He lashes the front door of the back one to the back door of the front one, puts them up. If you want to go in, feel free. Um, what happens is uh, he um, and then the back was family. What we do is okay. So I'm standing at the door. Over here is the table which we can set 12 people at. Over here is the cooking area, and we can walk through no problem. Yeah. We've actually done a buffet style table with 35 people. Not that. Mm -hmm. um, that wasn't Penzik. That was a uh, that was a different event. But uh, I mean. Uh, if you go to um, like uh, I think it's any of the uh, state rent fairs and you see a shop called Historical Glassers, yeah. that's Master oh, wow. Ali, like mm. hey, Jason. Yeah. Oh, it's mine. Friendly? Oh, Incredible. oh horribly vicious. She'll knock you down and lick you to death. Hi. Hi. No. <laughs> no licky. No licky. <laughs> no. I think you're lost <laughs> So this part was a little longer. Um and this is where at the end I sort of be able to make my escape. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. It was really cool, but my back was just, I had to go sit down then uh, after I talked to the, the third group with Connor and the weaponry and that type of stuff where they talked specifically about the bow. But uh, I thought it was really, really cool how he was able to explain everything with the archery, especially with, you know, riding archery, how they would have done it and how talented this guy was and how the bows varied depending on usage because you'd want to have a much smaller easier to use and manipulate bow if you're riding a horse and the great sword was quite cool the spear was really really neat it was a little when he said about how he like went and cleaned the thing up and it's an antique and it's like you're not really supposed to do that but you know it, it sort of hurts the value and it's like that but it was just having something of that age whatever that was quite cool and hearing, you know, how they were used. And, and the last sword, I would believe, would be a, referred to as a katana. But uh, 
uh, it was it was very cool talking to him, and uh, he really knew his stuff. Now the next group, uh, the gentleman, his name is Connor, and their group is called the Shire of the Black Rose, and it's black spelled B L A K, uh, without the C. And they do specifically weapon demonstrations, and they actually teach you how to use these things, like the medieval weaponry, uh, specifically the bows, and then they do axe throwing, and they do this down in Elizabethtown. And uh, he was actually a former student of Cliff's because I heard them, overheard them talking about it. And I was like, oh, cool. He's a former student it's like that. But that that's what they do. So in this next video, he sort of explains each of these weapons, how they're used and that time. And then goes into what they do. Uh, and then we'll talk more at the end of this video then about what the plan is you know, in short. So thanks and enjoy this next section. Hey. How are you folks doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Sounds good. Right, cool. Over here we have mostly archery, mm -hmm. um, some cooking books and booklets, but uh, for the most part I specialize. I uh, am a Warren and Marshall with our group. Um, I do uh, shoots every other Sunday mm -hmm. um, where the only real requirements are uh, wooden arrows, uh, mm -hmm. something that we uh, require for the historical element of it, and then a bow that doesn't have any gaps to it. So okay. if you want to use a takedown like modern bow, we have plenty of people who do that, just tape off the see-through points that lighten the, the bow. Um, but we don't do anything with pulleys or compound style elements of archery. So we have, right now, we've got all the bows are taken down so that, God forbid, any kid comes up and dry fires a bow is about the worst thing you can do to it. Yeah. <laughs> all that momentum goes straight back into the bow rather than the arrow being projected forward. Yeah. But we have a horse bow there. We've got uh, a laminate construction, recurve, and a long bow hanging up here. This is another laminate looks of it. Yes, yep, yeah, it's a laminate construction. Um, but we do traditional shooting. Um, all of mm -hmm. our arrows, uh, in order to count them for scores, have to be wooden. Um, but we do target shooting at various distances. We do clout shooting, which is shooting as far as you can to try yeah. to hit in a, a large area, flat on the ground rather than an upright target. Yeah, you're, you're, you're arcing. Yeah, they get the distance. Like, yeah, trying to go up. Well, it's actually, you get more distance shooting straight. But, okay. But as far as trying to hit, it, it's... And come down on a target. imitating coming down on a... On a you know, as, as they would in the day of doing mm -hmm. military, you know, war archery, yeah. Yeah. where you're arcing down on the enemy. Yeah, okay. Coming down on the backs of necks and the shoulders of yeah. horsemen or of in infantrymen whose shield fronts are facing you, their yeah. arms facing you. You know, uh, old school Roman phalanxes where you've got shield walls that come up in front and then over top yeah. to protect that kind of stuff. Um, in the same way, if you were uh, sieging a, a castle or something like that, you'd want to have shields or some form of cover overhead to prevent hot oils and yeah. rocks and arrows shooting down um, on your very unprotected back of your neck, top yeah. of your shoulders, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah. So cool. Any questions regarding archery or any other? No, that was, that? that was something I always enjoyed. I did you know, compound bone, that type sure. of thing. So, but. Well, if you ever want to shoot, we have plenty of loaner gear. You're welcome to come out. Um, any of the information that you reach out to on there, we can get you set up. We do it every other uh, Sunday in Elizabethtown. Oh, okay, um, cool. And then, I think that's the only one we currently have right now, is that Elizabethtown shoot. Yeah. Uh, that might be something that I'll come out and film yeah. for my channel then, too. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I also have thrown weapons going Oh, really? Cool. Time. Yeah. So I'm a marshal for that as well. Those are a little harder to display with kids because they're live steel weapons. You've got yeah, you don't want to get an axe in your forehead. <laughs> yeah. And all yeah. it takes is one little brother swinging, hey. Whack. Uh-oh. <laughs> Paperwork. Crap. Liability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can understand that. Yeah. So yeah. Last year, we actually we were able to set up down in the field there and, mm -hmm. and do thrown weapons. And mm -hmm. could, you know, the only thing we require, we're a, a free educational organization, you sign a safety waiver and that's it. And then yeah. after that... You know, kids are able to participate. I've mm -hmm. taught um, as young as five. That's the absolute low level limit that we're allowed yeah. for our insurance paperwork. But I've taught five year olds up to, I think last year we had an 89 year old throwing axes oh, wow. out on the field with yeah. us. And she got a couple to stick and it was a lot of fun. And, oh, yeah. But, but yeah, so come on out. If you reach out um, beforehand, uh, a lot of times we practice in normal clothes, mundane clothes, because yeah. uh, the sun can, you know, certainly affect. Uh, yeah. 
health benefits of everyone involved. So, yeah. uh, but if you want to do something for a channel like that, reach out and yeah. we can schedule Yeah, it's something I definitely know a shoot. number of YouTube channels that I'm friends with. It's like yeah. it's something they'd be interested in and get absolutely. more information out with you guys as well. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Reach yeah, out. Yeah, because... You can always do talk throughs and explain mm -hmm. bows while they're strung and you know stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's a little harder on in an easy up trying to display archery when you need a feel to really get the full breadth of it. But yeah, yeah, feel free to reach yeah. out and come on out. And we'll, Thank we'll you for what you guys do. No problem. Have a good yep. rest of your day. Thank you. I think uh, Clifford. Yeah, Cliff, Cliff, Cliff took off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, yeah. I wasn't as lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we have some talkers. If you uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Trap again. Skip the next tent. Okay. Very well Thank you. Man. If you want to talk about games, yeah, we've got you covered for another hour. But yeah, if you're looking to wander the other, my heads, back is I handicapped, so my back's fair. starting to feel it. Yeah, <laughs> find a picnic I'm bench. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there he is. Take the load off. Cool. Thank you. No problem. He got a tent away, and then we stopped. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I thought it was really, really cool. Um, me blabbing in between and uh, and all that, but. The plan is, the hope, and we might even talk about it a little bit in the video there. I would like, Cliff sounded very interested in it. Uh, they do these demonstrations. They do it down in E-Town, Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's just a little south of us. So I would like to be able to go back there, get together with them. I have all his information, and we're going to get in contact about it. And try to arrange a day that we can meet with them and do a video uh, videoing and filming of these demonstrations and even see some of us shooting bows and throwing axes. I don't know how successful we would be. I used to shoot compound bow and I was actually pretty good at it from a good distance. You know, I, how good that actually is, I don't know, but I really, really enjoyed it because, you know, it was a test of skill and understanding air movement and all the different types of stuff so you could get, you know, and, and angles and those types of things, depending on distance. And, uh, so this is obviously going to be a lot different. You have to use a thumb ring a lot of times, whereas like with compound bone, I'm using like a specialized glove to sort of hold everything there and then release and go from there. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's a shame my dad actually had, he had a, a long bow, which was, I believe it's where they put in, they glue the wood, wood together and stuff like that. But like the, uh, that was a really neat bow that he had there. Um, and then he had a metal one as well, which were both quite valuable. Unfortunately, I think they got somehow got pitched in the process of going through his stuff. But uh, I wish I still had that because um, those things were really neat because they had some age to them and, and it would have been neat to f actually fire down at some point. But so that's the plan. I'll keep you guys posted on it. It's another one of these adventures because we're trying to do a number of the next festivals coming up is old Anvil days. Uh, we're also talking about Bob and I are talking about the Kutztown festival. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to handle all the walking and it also depends on when the foot surgery happens. I'm not going to be ready to go and do something like that. It also depends on where this is healing wise. Uh, today we find out a little bit more. Um, and then lastly, uh, Fort Loudon. There's a festival they have there that Cliff and I are talking about, which apparently there's a lot of walking there as well. So it's just one of those things that depends on timing. It depends on the heat too, because I don't handle heat well. So I don't really, I, as much as I would love to go to one of these things, I also don't want to go with somebody and then I wind out holding up their fun because I'm just only able to handle so much. So I sort of, I got to do things within what my capabilities are. So we'll keep you guys posted on that, but this is definitely the Shire of the Black Road. We will be doing that at some point coming up. I think it's just a number of these cool events. I want to try to hit as many as I can. We want to hit the ones in Schaeferstown. Uh, I, have, I believe there's a cherry festival, and then there's obviously a bunch of stuff coming up in the fall as well. And at some point, I want to go uh, Conrad Weiser Homestead, take you to the Gat, and Effort of Cloister when they're doing their events. I would also, I also, also would like, there's a place somewhere in Lancaster where they take you back to, like, Revolutionary War period time. And they're sort of dressed up. There's an old mill there. And so, like, i got to research and find out what that is again, because... 
if it's even open yet anymore. Because we went as kids uh, for school, a school trip, and it was really, really cool. I think they have an Amish variant of that as well. That'd be cool to go to. Uh, I'd like to take you guys a couple of these different local museums. At some point, once the channel is going a little bit further, I would like to take you guys up to the Glenn Curtis Museum. I'd like to take you guys up to Fort Niagara because that is freaking phenomenal. So, a lot of plans, a lot of cool things that we can do. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, this was uh, Union Canal Days Part 2. Uh, I had to do this all in one video just because of the length of it. And, you know, I, I thought about editing certain parts out. And I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to split it up because that's one thing Cliff says is a good idea to do. It just sort of gives it a, a flow, even though I'm just sort of talking. Um, just explaining some of the stuff and just talking about it a little further with you guys. But it, I thought it was a really cool 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 aspect of it uh i would have liked to have explored some of those other ones but it just unfortunately time and just energy and that type of stuff but anyways thank you once again for coming along on another adventure and uh we'll see you guys all about town